What's up YouTube? Killer Chemist here with a review of the Thunder Bee Airsoft Grenades made by Hakatsu. I stayed away from these for a long time because I thought they were just too expensive for use and I opted for some other options before finally giving them a try. Let me give you a quick overview as to what you get when you buy a pack of these grenades and how they work. Then I'll break down how much they cost in comparison with other airsoft grenades and give my final review and talk about why these are my absolute favorite airsoft grenades to use. So first off, in this package, you will get 12 disposable grenade shells. I already used eight of them. And you get one core and you get two grenade pins. And you also get one replacement washer just in case you lose the first one. The only thing you will need to buy separate from this package is a CO2 cartridge. All right, so let's get into how you prepare the grenade to be thrown on the field. So when the grenade is completely disassembled, you first need to make sure that the needle that punctures the CO2 cartridge is properly in place, like so. Then, simply secure it in place with this black collar. Now, you are going to prime the firing mechanism by pulling back the hammer that hits the needle by locking the hammer in place with the pin. And then, you clamp the spoon down on the hammer to hold it in place, pull out the pin, and then reinsert the pin into the spoon to hold everything in place. Now, you need to insert the 12 gram CO2 cartridge into the core. They don't have to be any specific brand. I usually pick the cheapest ones available. Just be careful as I have seen some people talking about certain cartridges not fitting properly. Before buying a particular brand of cartridge, I will usually do a quick search on Reddit, like does brand X work for Thunderbee? And usually someone will have tried it out. Now, you just make sure the rubber stopper is in the core tube and slide the CO2 cartridge in like so and screw the bottom back onto the core. You gotta make sure that rubber stopper is in there so that the CO2 cartridge doesn't accidentally rattle around and hit the, the needle. Now, once the CO2 is in place, screw the core back into the firing mechanism and then screw the grenade shell on over that and that's it. You're all ready to go. If I need to quickly replace a grenade, I can usually get this whole process done in under a minute. So my favorite thing about these grenades is that they mimic a real grenade pretty accurately compared to other airsoft grenades. You can pull the pin and reinsert it if you change your mind and want to save it for later. The grenade won't go off unless you pull the pin and release the spoon, thereby releasing the hammer that hits the firing pin that opens the CO2 cartridge and rapidly fills the plastic disposable grenade shell with gas. And once you release that hammer, the plastic shell will burst in about three to five seconds. Of course, I took the CO2 cartridge out because I didn't want to waste a grenade. So here's what the grenade looks and sounds like on the field. Bruh. So overall, what makes this grenade my favorite is that it looks and functions like an actual grenade. It's incredibly reliable, with one caveat that I'll explain, and if it breaks, it's relatively cheap to replace, and most airsoft stores or airsoft websites have replacement parts readily available for you. Now let's get into some of the other airsoft grenades and why I prefer these over them, and why I actually think that over the long run, these are way cheaper to use. So my first grenade was the Airsoft Innovations Bang 22 grenade. It was marketed as a reusable grenade that used a blank 22 cartridge each time you threw it. And these cartridges were only like 10 cents a piece. So even though it was $100 for the grenade, you would save money in the long run. So if you threw it 100 times, then it only cost you $1 per throw. Now the problem was that the grenade only worked like two times and then the timer mechanism broke, causing it to go off the second you pulled the pin. I have two friends that each have the same grenade and those only worked about 10 times and they had the same problem. So that is about 10 to $50 per throw depending on your luck and you can't even get these grenades anymore or get them repaired under warranty because the company's gone bankrupt. So avoid these grenades, definitely don't buy them used. After wasting $100, I must admit I was pretty salty. So then I saw a new alternative, which was the Quake Impact Grenade by Tectonic Innovations. I almost got this product for its reusability and lower cost over time, but I have seen so many negative reviews of this grenade giving out and not going off anymore after a short period of time. 
So with a $150 to $170 price tag in the US, you would have to throw this grenade over 55 times to equal the cost per throw of the Thunder Bee. And I would almost bet that these grenades are not going to last that long, and they just look dumb, personal opinion. If you're curious about these grenades, go check out Pingu's video. Uh, he reviews them and talks about all their shortcomings. Then there are some other cheap grenades that fling BBs, but they don't really work that well, and they break easily as they're made completely out of plastic, so I would avoid these. And lastly, there are these disposable pyrotechnic grenades. These are probably the least available, and they cost somewhere around $10 to $20 per throw, and a lot of fields don't even allow pyrotechnic grenades, so they're not really a great everyday solution, although they are super cool. So let's break the prices down so you can see why the Thunder Bees are actually some of the cheapest grenades you can use. Just remember, this isn't a sponsored video, no one is paying me to say this, I just want to help the community get the most bang for their buck. So the cheapest way to buy these grenades right now is on Evite, starting with the set of 12 pineapple grenades that comes with the core, and they have a sticker price of $39, which is $42.26 after taxes. Then. After that, you will need CO2 cartridges, which you can shop around for, but if you wanted to just get everything in one place, Evike has this box of 25 that are actually very competitively priced for $16 a box. That comes out to about $0.69 cents per cartridge after tax. And then, if you buy the cheapest replacement shells, which are $18 for 12 pineapple shells, they come out to about $1.63 per shell after taxes. Now, when you do the math, the cost per throw comes out to $3.08 if you got 30 uses before your core broke. It's $2.89 if you get 40 uses out of your core. And if your core lasted 50 throws, then it would cost $2.77 a throw. And this is all after paying for California taxes and assuming you got free shipping or picked them up in store. So for $3 a throw with such a reliable product, I have realized that there are really not any cheaper alternatives for grenades with this kind of reliability. Now, I did mention earlier that there was a caveat to the reliability, so let me talk about that real quick. There are many models of the grenade shells out there, and they all cost a little different with the cheapest and most reliable being the pineapple shape. But if you purchased one of these flashbang or dumbbell style grenades, people have some issues with them not bursting 100% of the time. So if you really want these cylindrical styles, then it's recommended that you make some score marks with the razor blade along the two sides where the seams are in the plastic shell. And then this will help you give better points of failure so that the grenade will burst 100% of the time. And then it is also worth mentioning that they do have a tripwire style. So if that's your thing, you could try that. I've never actually tried them out, so that might be cool. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope this helps you make a decision about what grenades are right for your kit. Please hit the like button, drop a comment, and consider subscribing for new content.